Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part 18 of my pop rock mixing series in Logic Pro 10. In this video, we're gonna be adding a bit of automation to our mix, and we're only gonna be using offline automation, which basically means we're gonna be drawing in the automation with our mouse and adjusting the parameters that way. We're not gonna be doing any real-time or live automation where you use a MIDI controller or a control surface to write it in. If you don't know what automation is, automation is a way for you to write in um, and change mix parameters across time. So a simple example is like this, taking the volume of a track and bumping it up and then maybe bumping it back down. But um, this isn't just for volume. You can use it for track volume, you can use it for send amounts, you can use it for auxiliary channel volume, you can automate plugins. So all of those things we'll be doing uh, in this video today. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is um, hit undo a couple times to get rid of the automation that I created. There we go. And the way you can pull up automation on a track is you click on the track and then hit A, and it'll pull up automation on that track. Now, by default, automation should be enabled on the track, and when you see this little blue uh, button here, but if it's not, it'll be grayed out like that, and you can just click the on button there and it'll turn on. Also, uh, just for example, we're gonna be using all track-based automation today, not region-based automation. So if this is on region, just click on it and set it back to track. All right, so one of the first things I wanna do is in the vocal harmonies for the verse, the, uh, you can see the lead vocals down here, and then the harmony is up here. When the, we have those vibratoed notes at the tail end of each phrase, um, having the, the vibrato in both the lead vocal and the harmony sounds a little weird. And so what I wanna do is kinda of just fade down the tail end of the vocal harmonies. Let's just listen to these two by themselves with no automation and you'll see what I mean. It's only you're in love. You know it's magical when my tears are raining blood. You told me everything that I wanted to hear. You stole the magic from my heart. So in my opinion, the tail end of each one of these phrases where the vibrato kicks in needs to come down a little bit. Maybe just needs to be faded out a bit. Not completely faded out, but fade it out just a touch, just like so. So the way you can do it is you find the front end of the note that you want to sort of fade out, create an automation point. Um, by the way, automation lines are called break point envelopes. We're creating a break in the envelope or to create a different shape. And then I'm gonna create one sort of after uh, the note and then one sort of where you want the fade to end. I'm gonna pull it down to about negative 19. So the volume is gonna fade down just a little bit and then bump back up in the silence fade back down a little bit and bump back up in the silence. Uh, on this one, we're gonna do the same thing right here. We're gonna pull this down. Now, if you need to get rid of an automation point, like if you accidentally created one like I did there, um, what you can do is you can just uh, click on the point, or double click on the point rather, and it'll go away. So pull this down to negative 19. Or, yep, there we go. The other thing I noticed is the front end of this phrase is a bit loud. Um, it's just a, a bit abrasive, so I'm just going to kind of fade in the front end of this phrase. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is, toward the end here, this whole last phrase to me is just too loud. So if you just grab the automation bar, you can just pull the whole bar down quite a bit. There we go. And then we'll fade out the last phrase here as well. So let's see what this whole thing sounds like now. And there you go. Now one thing I didn't do at the very end here is I didn't create a sort of like a pivot point to go back to because the original volume was negative 14. So what I'm gonna do is when we go over to the second verse and we start working with the second verse, because we're essentially gonna do the same thing over here, is I just wanna make sure that I bring the volume, the starting volume, back up to uh, negative 14. So we'll do that. Uh, if you find that you have trouble um, getting the value right on the value you want, what you can do is kind of get close to it, and then you can hold the control button, and the automation will move at a slower pace than it did without holding control. So that's negative uh, 14 there. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. Um, we're going to, all these vibrato notes, create three points, 
pull the fade down to like negative 19. Do the same thing here. There we go. And the same thing over here. And I'm going to fade in these first couple words here, just like we did previously, because it seems a bit loud. Pull that down a bit. There we go. Pull this down a bit. And then pull down the very last word just a touch. There we go. So let's listen to uh, let's listen to our second verse now. You took it off from me, set shoulders down my spine. You're just so magical, I want to make you mine. Don't tell me you love me if you can't back up your words. You'll steal the magic from my heart. There you go. All right, so that's just some volume automation on the vocals. Um, you could go through your vocals and you can and, and you really get nitpicky about things and pull up certain words and pull certain words down. Um, it's completely up to you how OCD you want to be about it. So I try to take care of all of my volume issues with compression and just levels as much as I possibly can. So, all right, um, another thing we want to do with volume is in the drums. Um, but because the drums are more or less like a group, I want to pull up all the drums, uh, pull up and down all the drums simultaneously. I don't want to just, um, I don't want to just, you know, pull up or down just one of the drums. So there's one spot um, toward the end where there's this big fill and it, it just isn't coming out, um, isn't cutting through the mix uh, good enough. So let's find that spot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to automate just that one spot up um, just so we can hear that fill a little bit better. I think it's right, right here. Yeah, it's this fill right here. Just doesn't uh, doesn't come through the mix very very well. So what I'm gonna do, you can do this with a VCA or with an aux with the aux track. Since I already have a drum aux track right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on that and choose uh, create track. And what this will do is create a uh, uh, a visible aux track in the arrange window. Hit X to hide my mixer. Let's pull the drum aux all the way down here by the drums. There we go. And then what we can do is just at that spot, we can automate the volume of our drum bus. So I'm going to hit A to show volume. Find the starting point of the fill, which is about right there. Create two points over here. Create two points over here. I'm creating a, a little bit longer fade out just so it doesn't sound so abrupt. And we'll pull this up to about negative one. Let's see what that sounds like. I'm gonna go ahead and just solo the drums. Yeah, we could pull it up maybe even a little, little further. See what that sounds like in the mix with everything else in there. Yeah, there we go. Uh, one more thing we need to do with the drums is the very end, if you've listened to the iTunes version of the song, the very last two little cymbal crashes, the last two notes. In this recording, the cymbal crash just rings out. In the released version, this, the last cymbal crash is sort of choked. So I'm just going to add a fade that basically goes down to negative infinity, which basically just fades it down to nothing. Just like that. Maybe a little less abrupt, though. There you go. All right, one uh, other thing we can uh, automate is plugins. And there's a point in between the uh, bridges and choruses where it basically just cuts to that little... Um, sort of um, reggae rhythm uh, in the keys and the clean guitar. And then the chorus starts. Um, in the recorded, the, uh, the iTunes version, if you've heard it, um, at that point, those, those keys and guitar are kind of filtered in. They're kind of like low passed, and then the filter lets up as the chorus hits. Here they sound the same throughout the whole transition. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to uh, go find our clean guitar and keys aux that we created before, our submaster that we created before. And we're going to right click on it and create a track out of it, just like we did before. And so we have our keys clean track up here. And we earlier we put um, the linear phase EQ on that um, aux track just to beef up the high end a little bit. One thing I'm going to do that's completely unrelated to automation is just beef up the middle range just a bit. I feel like it needs a little more mid-range. But what we're going to do is we're going to take that same linear phase EQ and we're going to add a filter to it. So I'm going to turn on this filter up here. It's a low pass filter, also known as a high cut filter. Um, and I'm going to pull the slope up to its maximum value and pull this down to about, we'll type it in, about 1800. 1800 hertz. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this as, as the, these um, uh, this little idea comes in in between the bridge and the chorus, we're going to sweep this filter up and open up the filter. So it's going to start closed like this and then with automation it's going to it's going to sort of open up. So let's do that. Um, so what we can do is on our keys clean track, we can hit A, open up automation. And before we were just adjusting volume parameters. Now, if you click on volume here, you can choose any parameter within any plugin or almost any plugin that you have on the track. So there's our linear phase EQ, and there's the high cut frequency. And you'll notice that it's at 1800 hertz, so it matches what we have going on in here. So what I'm gonna do is just before the very first note here, I'm gonna click and create an automation point. And then I'm gonna create another automation point just right there, just after the last note as we get into the chorus, and we're gonna pull this up to 20,000 hertz. So now what's gonna happen is this. So watch, watch the automation and also watch the plugin. So we have that little filter sweep transition. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that the material before the sweep doesn't isn't filtered out because we've uh, effectively filtered out everything from the beginning of the song down to 1800 which we don't want to do so let's create another point let's create another point um, over here there we go let's put it right there where it's back up at 20,000 again and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I snap my automation um, to the grid I'm going to turn snap to grid snap to beat on and I'm going to turn on my snap automation parameter and the reason for that is it's going to make this automation easier to copy so now when I grab each point it's going to snap to a point on the grid so that's snapping to the beat the second beat of the measure before the little uh, reggae idea pops in there so what we can do now is we can use our automation select tool we can drag over whoop hang on Let's pull the beginning up to uh, 20,000 hertz as well. There we go. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to drag over this little idea that we have here, hit Command-C to copy it, and what we need to do is find the other bridge chorus transition, put the playhead on the second beat of the measure, and then hit Command-V, and it'll paste it right where it needs to go. That was the whole reason for snapping the automation to the grid, uh, is to make that first point right where it needs to go. So here's where the next one comes in, here's beat number two. And let's hit Command V, and it pastes it right into place where it needs to be. Let's hear that with the music. Cool, so that's one little transition that we can do there, just with a, a, just a slight filter sweep. All right, the next one we're gonna do is a little more complicated. Um, toward the end of the song, again, if you've heard the, the version that's on iTunes, um, after the last two little notes, um, the reverb tail of the vocal sort of carries on for a little while. The problem is the reverb that we chose, the, it's like a shimmering reverb we chose from um, Space Designer before, really, really has a lot of uh, like echo to it. It's not just a reverb, it sort of delays like a delay or echo plugin does. So this is what the tail end of, of the vocal sounds like right now. Tail end of my heart. You can hear those echoes. Um, and that's not just 
the delay's fault, but it's also the Vox Reverb uh, fault, uh, Vox Reverb channel's fault. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna automate down the volume of both the Vox Verb channel, just like so. And we're also gonna automate down the volume of the Vox Delay channel, or just the Delay channel. There we go. So now there's no verb after that last note. You're stealing up my heart. So it's totally dry. But we want a different reverb to come in there that doesn't have all those echoes. So this is a little weird, so follow me here. Um, what I'm gonna do is create a send off of the main vocal bus. We're gonna go to bus, and the only open bus is bus 12. So I'll create a send on bus 12. And bus 12, let's pull up the, the amount there, about halfway. I'm gonna call this ending verb. And the reverb that I'm looking for for this is a sh sort of shimmering long-tailed reverb that doesn't have that echo that the, the vocal reverb has in it. Um, and I found uh, in my tests before this video that the uh, preset I really liked was actually in the Platinum Verb plugin. So let's go ahead and add Platinum Verb to this. The preset I liked was called Bright Long Verb. So I'm gonna use that and pull the wet signal all the way up, make sure the dry is all the way down. I pull the reverb time up a touch and pull the room size up a touch as well as turn the spread option up a bit. So now what we can do is we're gonna right click on this ending verb track. And we're gonna create a track out in the arrange window with it. And this ending verb is not gonna be on the whole time because here if I just play it by itself, it's too dense of a reverb to really be musically useful um, for the whole song. It's way too much. But just for this one little last sp spot here, we're gonna use it. We're gonna, as we faded out those other two reverbs, and or the other reverb and delay, we're going to fade in this last one. Just like so. So you're only really gonna hear it as an effect right at the end of the song. For the rest of the song, it's not really going to be, to be active. So let's listen to that um, with everything in, in the mix. Let me hit, click on the background, hit Z just so I can see everything. There we go. And there you go. All right, so let's just listen to this whole thing one more time from the middle of the, uh, the last chorus. All right, there you go. That's really all the automation I wanna wanna add to this song. I don't think it mean, needs a whole lot. Um, in the next video, we'll move on to adding some transitions between our sections, and then um, I'll have a separate video on how to create the uh, vocal intro for the song. And then what we'll do is we'll move on to some, some last tweaks, and then we'll move on to final mastering. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.